We're joined up here in our PBS News booth right now by Captain Sam Brown. He is a U.S. Senate candidate in Nevada, running against the incumbent Democrat, Jackie Rosen. Captain Brown, welcome. Thanks for joining us here. Thank you. It's good to be here with you. So you served in Afghanistan. You were injured during your time in your service there in 2008. You heard what these families had to say. We know we're going to hear a little later from vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance, who talks about how his service informed how he views foreign policy. Do you agree with him in the way that he has articulated his views so far? I don't know exactly what all of um, you know, J.D. Vance's positions are, but I can tell you what I see out of President Trump, um, his his record as president, and, and what I believe is that the United States of America needs to be a leader in the free world, and that we achieve peace through strength. And one of the really important messages that we just heard from Mr. Lopez, a gold star father, uh, regarding his son Hunter and, and, and what families and, and service members Kelly hope to see out of their commander in chief is someone who has fire. compassion and, and also gives hope. And, and I think that's an important quality that is uh, sometimes over, uh, overlooked. Do you feel like your time and your service overseas help to shape your worldview and what you think American policy should be right now? Absolutely. Tell us about that. What, what I saw and what I experienced was um, part of our mission was to, to serve and help the Afghan government stand up and provide you know, basic, in the United States terms, very basic services. They're very you know, advanced services. And in particular, the mission that I was wounded on, we were providing security as you know, Allied forces, ISAF forces were moving a turbine to the Helmand River to a dam to provide power for all of southern Afghanistan. Uh, this is something that you know would help the economy. It would it would help you know businesses. It would it bring electricity to schools. Undoubtedly, it could help. And I think Americans are very you know very compassionate. Uh, they want to see the, the world be better. And also, as as the world is uplifted economically and Expected. We also see more freedom thrive. Yeah. We, we should note that we are competing with a lot of background noise here. Captain Brown, if you wouldn't mind, sir, moving your microphone up your lapel just a bit more so our, our audience at home can hear you a bit better. Is that, is that okay there? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Do, do I have to say all that again? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> On the, on the specific issue of Ukraine, as we talk about foreign policy, uh, J.D. Vance has been one of the most vocal critics of continued U.S. support for Ukraine. He said, I don't really care one way or another what happens in Ukraine. And in many ways, this isn't a partisan issue. There are Democrats and Republicans who have said that Russia's war in Ukraine threatens small d democracy around the globe. How do you see it? Look, I, I think that... This is one of those issues that is unfortunately just been boiled down to, you know, a headline, right? But um, I think it's important that we continue to lead, um, that, that frankly, we're, we're able to blunt Putin's ability to continue to be an aggressor. What we see is it's not just a Putin versus Ukraine dynamic here. This is a this is an alignment of Iran, of, of China, of North Korea, of Russia together. And, and we're, when we have an opportunity to blunt uh, those forces that are trying to align against the United States in the free world, um, I think that we ought to take that very seriously, that, that, uh, you know, that responsibility. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's my view. Is that, should we take that to mean that you would like to see the U.S. continue to support Ukraine in their defense against Russia? You'd like to see continued aid? I, I would like to see us, I would like to see the, a, a change in the way that we do it. I want to see more accountability. You know, we, the American people are, are funding a good deal of our effort there. Um, and, and we owe it to the American people to be able to demonstrate what's happening with those dollars. Um, so there's been an element of a lack of kind of sort of transparency and accountability that I think is owed to the American people. But I wouldn't say that we just need to turn off uh, our support. Reproductive rights, that's certainly going to be a resonant issue in this election. It has been ever since 
uh, the Supreme Court overturned Roe. Every time reproductive rights has appeared on the ballot since the court overturned Roe, uh, abortion activists and Republicans have lost. You, as I understand it, you support the law in Nevada that preserves abortion access up to 24 weeks, as I understand it? That's right. Why? And do you feel like you are running counter to your party's position on this? No, I mean, a hallmark of the Republican Party and conservatism is, you know, respecting the Tenth Amendment and allowing, you know, states to be able to create laws that, you know, reflect their constituency. And, and so um, I've been really consistent in saying this ought to be an issue that voters and states are able to address in alignment with, you know, the, 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 the voice and, and sort of the decision of those voters. Um, and, and so that's, that's where I'm at. And I, I think that's where a lot of other Republicans are going now, too. Before we let you go, I'd love to get your take on, on your race and how you think this ticket helps or hurts you. This clearly seems to be, with the addition of J.D. Vance, really a doubling down on appealing to voters in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. In Nevada, does this ticket help you and how? Who does it help you reach? You know, I, I think what this ticket does is, and, and across the country, is J.D. Vance's story. He comes from such humble beginnings. Um, you know, he, he had undoubtedly a very tough childhood. Uh, there's a lot of people out there who, again, I'm going to go back to the two things that Mr. Lopez said that he's looking for in leadership, someone with compassion and someone who can deliver hope. And, and J.D. Vance's life demonstrates that we can have hope. You can, you can still aspire and achieve incredible things uh, regardless of the tough circumstances we're in. And there's a lot of Nevadans that are, are looking for something that they can kind of cling on to and say, hey, if he can make Make it, maybe I can make it too. And that's part of what my campaign is is hoping to do is say, look, I'm not the prettiest Senate candidate out there. No one's going to argue with me on that. Um, you know, I come from humble beginnings as well. Um, but I'm a father, I'm a small business guy, I'm a husband, I'm a veteran. And and, and why, why can't I, why shouldn't I also have an opportunity to be a, a voice and a leader for our state? And not just me, but other people out there as well. The Biden campaign says it has multiple paths to victory to 270 electoral votes. One of those paths is through the Sun Belt. Uh, do they have it right? I mean, what, what's, how, how would you characterize the, the, the Republican standing in Nevada right now? I, I think, I think it's, we're seeing a, a shift. And part of it is that we're a transient state. You know, a lot of people kind of move in and out. 80% of Nevadans now weren't born and raised there. Um, and so, so the state is constantly evolving. Right now we have almost identical registration between Republicans and Democrats. A lot of people in the middle is independents. And, and they're not, they weren't necessarily there when Jackie Rosen was elected six years ago. And so what I see is, is people who, we have, we have ticket splitter voters, you know. Last election we had Governor Lombardo as a Republican, you know, was elected. Uh, and Cortez Masto as a Democrat was elected in the Senate. And so um, people are just looking for, for someone who they, can, who they can trust, who they can relate to, and who will lead, um, to, you know, for, with their best interest in mind. Captain yeah. Sam Brown, U.S. Senate candidate in Nevada. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for being with us here tonight. We appreciate your time. My honor. Thank you.